正会。Rebirth of the malicious empress of military lineage, Chapter 101. Drunk. The Shen family banquet was held two days later. The banquet was suggested by Old Shen Furen herself. The previous annual family banquets were always single-handedly arranged by Ren Wanyan, but this year it was handled by Chen Rikayu. Now that the management power of the Shen family landed onto Chen Rikayu's hands. Old Shen Furen naturally felt that this was giving Chen Rikayu a big face, but did not know that behind the glorious appearance, it made one miserable. In Kayu Shui Yuan, Chen Rikayu was sitting in front of a table, holding an accounting book in one hand, and the other hand was awkwardly calculating on the abacus. The two maids standing behind spoke out, "Furen, you have been calculating for an entire afternoon." It is better to take a break. The money just cannot seem to tally. Chen Rikayu shook her head in distress. Tomorrow's entire account to Liang has to come out from my own pocket. As she spoke, a trace of anger appeared on her face. Chen Rikayu had flaunted herself as a noble female from a scholarly family, and thus was proud and aloof and could not bear the smell of money. In the beginning, when Old Shen Furen handled the household power to Ren Wanyan. It was not that she was not jealous inside, but she could not bring her face down to fight. Thus, at the end, there was a knot of it in her heart. After so many years of troubles, she became the matriarch of the Shen family. But it was only now she found out that this management power was not easy to grasp. Ren Wanyun was from a wealthy merchant family, and normally, when Old Shen Furen wanted to spend more money, Ren Wanyun could subtract it from her own dowry since she did not lack money. But the Chen family were only civil officials. If one were to speak positively, it was that breeze flowed into their sleeves, A.K.A. unsoiled by corrupt practices. But if one were to speak negatively, it was that they were poor. Thus, how could they be able to fork out more money to make up for it? Chen Rikayu thought that by taking over the management power. She would be able to divert money to subsidize her family expenses. But the now looking at the situation, Ren Wan Yun had been fishing a lot for so many years that the money in the accounting books did not tally at all. Now that the family banquet was approaching, there was not enough silver. It was still all right previously, as Shen Xin would receive a generous reward from the palace every year. But now that Shen Xin and the Shen family relationship was in a deadlock. There was no opportunity for the public funds to subsidize. Thus, Chen Rikayu felt some headache. Obviously, knowing that there was not enough money in the public fund, Old Furen still want to hold the family banquet at this time. This is bullying Furen. Chen Rikayu's maid felt indignant for her. Eldest master also intend to do nothing to save one from ruin. Since Furen's money is not enough, why not ask master for some? Hu Yi also said, "What nonsense are you saying?" Chen Rikayu said, "Master's salary is not enough to bribe in the official circles. How can one ask him to fork out money?" She continued, "Let me think of what to do." Chen Wan set his heart to climb up in his official career, but Chen Gui was different. Chen Gui bit off more than one could chew, and he did not have any ability. Thus, could only fawn and curry favor to keep up appearances. Chen Wan was climbing up a step at a time, and even though his steps were slower, he was much more practical than Chen Gui. Chen Rikayu always knew that because she was unable to give birth to a son. The only thing she could rely in the second household was Shen Wan's love for her. Thus, in order to control Shen Wan, she was gentle and soft. But if she was unable to resolve the small amount of money in the household, then would it not be troublesome for Shen Wan? With Shen Wan's qualification, there were lots of female who were willing to enter the second household. So why would she put herself at a disadvantage? Moreover, this little money will not be spent in vain. Chen Rikayu's eyes flashed. If there are profits to be harvested, then it is worth to spend. Furen's intention is. Chen Rikayu smiled. It is strange that old Tai Tai did not hold the family banquet earlier or later, but at this time. Moreover, I had heard that in previous days that Su Shubi, a young lady, likes to head to the western courtyard. Chen Rikayu's eyes showed a trace of disgust as she spoke. 
old tie ties action are really low level but it is suitable. I also do not like Shen Kaiyu. Chen Rikaiyu did not like Shen Yu on and similarly did not like Shen Kaiyu. If one were to say that she was a bit fearful of Shen Yu on but about Shen Kaiyu. She really looked down upon him. She herself could not give birth to a son so she could not see other people's son being outstanding. Towards Shen Kaiyu, Chen Rikaiyu only felt that he was a coarse person who only know about swords and knives, for what reason he could gain so much praises from so many people. People would want to destroy things that they were unable to gain, and she dare not take action on Shen Yu on as he had deep thoughts but Shen Kaiyu was straightforward and honest. Moreover he had not grown up in the inner courtyard so he was much easier to deal with. The most important thing was that she did not even need to do it herself, as this time the person who took action was old Shen Furin and she only need to sit back and watch the show. I will go back and write a few more invitations. Chen Rikaiyu said. Go and find people to send the invitations to the various Furin's residences. It would be even better when more people come to watch. Two days later at the Shen residence's family banquet. Ever since Ren Wan Yun went crazy, those noble Furin's had broken the exchanges with her. After all it was not a glorious thing for one to have a young lady who got pregnant before marriage. Even though one did not know what happened to Ren Wan Yun, when the tree topples the monkeys scatters so no one asked about Ren Wan Yun. And those Furins that originally had a good relationship with Ren Wan Yun gradually got closer with Chen Rikaiyu. Even though one could not keep dealing with Ren Wan Yun but the relationship with the Shen residence still had to be maintained. There was not only one Furin in the Shen residence. But as compared to the rough and always not in the Ding capital Wozu Yan, Chen Rikaiyu who was from a scholarly family and was much better to fawn over. Yi Furin and Zhang Furin had long came over and Zhang Zhezhuan and Yi Pei Lan pulled Shen Yu to speak. One can only go back to Guangwenteng after the end of the year. It is really boring to be locked in the residence. They had totally forgotten about the death of Shen King as they chatted and also forgotten that just not long ago they were good friends of Shen King. The friendship between the Ding capital noble females were that thin, as friendship could not be compared against benefits. Getting along with another was not just because of a person but the forces present behind the person. Shen Yu also smiled at their response, as if the few of them had an understanding with the rest to invariably forget about Shen King's matter. It was Bei Wei who looked at a distant figure and said, Oh, who is that? Is that the Biao young lady that you all were talking about? She pointed with her chin to the young female standing not far away, who was wearing a simple apricot colored dress talking to a servant by her side. That is third younger sister, Shen Dongling. Shen Yu said with a smile. She is born from a Yi Niang and previously was sick so she did not come out. It is natural for you all not to see her before. She deliberately focused on the word Yi Niang. Hearing this, Zhang Zhezhuan's and the rest's eyes suddenly filled with disdain. Yi Pei Lan said, What sickness? She still, she still came out. Those who are raised by a Yi Niang all have hidden intentions. You must not be swindled by her. Shen Yu smiled, Third younger sister does not really come out of the courtyard. Look at that, that is my Biao older sister. As Shen Yu was speaking, she saw Jing Chu Chu walking over. Most likely she did not see Shen Yu and the three of them so she did not come to greet. It was Bei Wei's sharp eyes that asked in puzzlement, Did not you mention that her that Biao older sister is from Suzhou? Why do I just see that her clothes and jewelry seem to be very expensive? Look at the bracelet she is wearing. It is better than the one you are wearing. Bei Wen said it unintentionally but Shen Yu's face paled and she barely forced a smile. I also do not know. Most probably it was gifted by Zhu Mu. What is there to see? Zhang Zhezhuan said, Could it be that someone from Suzhou can be better compared to us? Young ladies in the Ding capital, jewelry and clothes are just a pretense but exposure and temperament are not. You see that delicate and timid look, how can this be shown in public? Shen Yu shook her head. You should not say that of Biao older sister. You are just too kind. Yi Pei Lan felt resentful of iron not becoming steel. You get close with everyone, even that idiot from your residence that you also defended previously. Now people has grown up and do not place any importance to you. Speaking of which, 
Why have one not seen that idiot? The idiot she was speaking about was naturally Shen Miao. After she had the dispute with Shen Miao and Wang Wenjiang, Yi Pei Lan has viewed Shen Miao as her number one enemy and could not wait to step on her. And the Shen Miao she was speaking about was at the moment in a room in the western courtyard, drinking tea with Shen Kaiyu. What is with Mu? Shen Kaiyu frowned as he spoke. Why invite so many female guests over? No matter where one walk, there is so much twittering. So noisy. Most likely one had invited all third Shen's friends over. Shen Miao poured some tea for Shen Kaiyu. Perhaps they are here to admire your deputy general's elegant bearing. Younger sister, spare me. Shen Kaiyu waved his hands. One is already tough to deal with much less so many females. Even the battlefield is not this terrible. Shen Miao felt somewhat amused. The appearance of Shen Kaiyu seeing females like a fierce beast and severe floods was really funny but thinking about it, it was expected. Most females around Shen Kaiyu had ulterior motives and the Shen residence's females were all not easy to deal with thus with his straightforward attitude, it was like a nest of demons. How could it be that difficult? Shen Miao tried to appease him, in the future once you meet a young lady of your liking, you will not think that anymore. Shen Kaiyu did not speak and stared at her like he had seen a ghost. After a moment he then shook his head and said, younger sister, the words you just said and that expression really look like mother. Shen Miao. Thinking about that, she felt that she really treated Shen Kaiyu like he was Fei Ming, just as she was about to speak. Suddenly there was some noise outside. She and Shen Kaiyu exchanged a look and both of them walked out and saw someone shouting at the courtyard door. What is with you all? I am here to see Shen Miao. Let me in. Shen Miao was startled. Feng Anning. When that person heard Shen Miao's voice, she waved her hands even though she was blocked by the guards. It is me Shen Miao. Quickly ask them to let go of me. Let her go. Shen Miao said. She is the young lady of the Feng family. After Feng and Ning was released by the two guards, she then patted the dust on her clothes bad-temperedly and said angrily, What is the matter with you? Why is there so many guards in your own courtyard? I thought that you were in trouble and when coming in I was stopped by the people outside. Shin Miao, are you crazy? It was probably the first time Feng and Ning was stopped by someone and her bossy young lady attitude came out and she lashed out at Shen Miao. But coincidentally she stepped onto Shen Kaiyu's foot. Shen Kaiyu stood forward and said in a cold voice, Who are you? To shout that loud in someone else's house. Do you know what is etiquette? Shen Miao. For Shen Kaiyu to say one did not know any etiquette. It was really thought-provoking. After being lectured, Feng Anning wanted to refute when she looked up, but after seeing Shen Kaiyu she could not help but be slightly surprised for a moment. Shen Kaiyu had a handsome appearance and was different from the weak and delicate gentlemen of the Ding capital. Normally he had a smile on which made him look innocent but when his face was cold, he became the reputed deputy general of the battlefield and had some predatory air. Feng and Ning immediately curbed her arrogance and softly asked, Who are you? This is my eldest brother. Shen Miao said, Shen Kaiyu has a little reputation in the Ding capital. Southern Z, Northern Xin. One would often compare the little marquis of the Z family and the deputy general of the Shen family. But it was a pity that Zi Jingxing was not willing to enter official demels. Both of them would be the most outstanding generals of this generation. What are you here for? Seeing that Feng and Ning was somewhat embarrassed, Shen Miao asked. Once Feng and Ning heard this she complained, I come to look for you to chat. You also know after those people from Guang Wenteng knew that my relationship with you is not bad, they also excluded me. Who cares about that? So I came over to look for you. After Shen Kaiyu heard this, his facial expression became a little at ease. She knew that Shen Miao was somewhat snubbed but unfortunately because he was not around most of the year, he could not always protect Shen Miao. Seeing that Shen Miao had a friend, even though she had an arrogant temperament and did not know about etiquette but, one made do with it. Of course he and Feng and Ning also did not know that the not bad relationship was something that Feng and Ning felt herself, as Shen Miao really did not have the heart to make friends with others. Since your friend came over, then you all should chat. 
Shen Kaiyu softly coughed, I will go out and speak to father about some things. Shen Miao complied and after Shen Kaiyu walked away Feng and Ning then softly said, Why is your eldest so fierce and vicious? I was scared to death just now. Fierce and vicious. Shen Miao was too lazy to explain so she said, Yes. He kills people like cutting bean curd. Feng and Ning quickly patted her chest and said, Fortunately I admitted my fault early and next time I would not dare to just rush in anymore. Without realizing, it was time for the Shen family banquet to start. Male and female guests were seated separately. The females were all sitting at the hall of Rong Jingting while the male guests were under the care of Shen Gui and Shen Wan. Since Shen Xin did not have much interest in the family banquet, he did not care to go around fawning in the official circles, so he just sat down to drink. There were not many guests that came over and most of them were civil officials who had good relationship with Shen Gui and Shen Wen, and thus did not have anything to talk with Shen Xin. Thus when one looked over at the bustling table, it seemed like Shen Xin and Shen Kaiyu were deliberately neglected. Shen Kaiyu was not in the slightest unhappy as he was happy eating the food by himself. But it was Shen Yuan who portrayed a shadow of Shen Gui, with his smooth and slick appearance that made Shen Kaiyu somewhat lose his appetite. At the other side on the female guests, the ones who were naturally neglected were Lu Zhu Yan and Shen Miao. Since they were Chen Kaiyu's friends, naturally they would give her face. Even though they could not ridicule Shen Miao in front of Wu Zhu Yan, they could treat her coldly. Those young ladies and furins keep talking to Chen Rikayu and Shen Yu, and even pretended to care about Jing Chu Chu and Shen Dongling and talked a few words with them. Only Shen Miao was purposely ignored. Lu Zhu Yan was somewhat angry and if it was the past Shen Miao, she would be acting out rashly. But now it was different and even if those furin and young ladies were talking with excitement, Shen Miao would reservedly take her meal. Each move of hers had a type of majesty and grandeur, that made others have an illusion that it was not that others were deliberately neglecting her, but that Shen Miao herself disdained from talking to those people. As if a punch had landed on soft cotton and after many times, everyone's interest started to die down. Yi Furin smiled and said, it is always said that Suzhou is a place endowed with talents and previously I did not believe it but after seeing this be a young lady from old Furan's family, one believe that those words were not false. Our capital would not be able to raise such a full of life young lady. During the banquet old Shen Furan had shown high importance towards Jing Chu Chu and even though the Furans present did not know the reason why. They were not fools. Since old Furan wanted to enliven Jing Chu Chu up then there was no harm in saying that she was beautiful. Jing Chu Chu was so shy that her face flushed and she lowered her head and dare not say anything. Old Shen Furan laughed, Yi Furan words, this old person cannot agree. Yi young lady is also full of life that when I see I also like. Yi pale and smiled and thanked old Shen Furan's praise. She became more curious about Jing Chu Chu and softly asked Shen Yu, Old Furan look like she really like your Biao older sister. Shen Yu vaguely agreed and her heart was somewhat doubtful. Even though Shen Dongling sat at the corner of the banquet, Wan Yi Niang did not have the opportunity to be present at this kind of situation. Since she did not have her birth mother to help poor old Shen Furin to lift up, she was a nobody. Even it was such, Shen Dongling did not reveal a hint of unwillingness and just ate from her bowl, and behave properly like what an unfavored Shu daughter should be. Old Shen Furin at one end instructed Jing Chu Chu to eat more and at the other hand talked to others about Jing Chu Chu good points. She practically made a pretty daughter from a humble family into one that was from heavens. Until a servant came over to pour tea and accidentally spilled tea over Jing Chu Chu then she stopped. Old Shen Furan scolded the careless servant, how do you do thing? What if be a young lady is scalded? It is all right. Jing Chu Chu smiled, the tea is not hot so I am fine. Are the clothes wet? Old Shen Furan saw that the front of Jing Chu Chu's clothes had a large patch of water and caringly said, It is a cold day and one cannot wear such wet clothes. Zai Er bring be a young lady down to change into a set of clean clothes. She then also said to Jing Chu Chu, 
one must not catch a cold. Jing Chu Chu lowered her head and looked at her old clothes. No matter how thin winter clothes were they would still be heavy, thus when tea was soaked into the cotton, it would not be comfortable if one were to continue wearing them. Thus at the moment she did not decline and agreed with old Shen Furin as her face reddened and said her greetings to the female guests before following the maids to leave. Zhang Furan said, Jing family's young lady is really fortunate to have old Furan to value this much, how is it her fortune? The smile on old Shen Furan face was wrinkled together, it is this old person's fortune. This girl is well behaved and sensible, thus this one like. Hearing this, Everyone started up flattering. Chen Rikayu glanced at old Shen Furin and her gaze unconsciously went towards Shen Miao. Most likely she had felt her eyes, so Shen Miao also looked towards Chen Rikayu with some slightly puzzled intention. Chen Rikayu smiled and lowered her head and a trace of pleased filled her heart. But she did not see that when she was lowering her head, the doubts on Shen Miao's eyes disappeared and was replaced with a light smile. If one were to seriously look, that smile contained some kind of inexplicable excitement. It was Shen Dongling who looked at Shen Miao without a trace before quickly lowering her head to eat the things from her bowl. At the male side of the banquet it was not as meticulous as the female side, but it was like in the official circles and was filled with wine. Even though Shen Xin and Shen Kaiyu were left out, there were several colleagues who came over to toast and after a few cups, Shen Kaiyu's head was a little dizzy and heavy. Brat, only drink a few cups and you got drunk. Did you not eat? Shen Xin said angrily. Shen Kaiyu rubbed his brows and shook his head. One do not know. As a man who grew up in the barracks, this little bit of wine was nothing. One need to know that normally in the army. One would drink by the jaws and thus would look down on the wine in the Ding capital as it was not strong enough. Who knew that today one would be hit on the face? Really taught you for nothing after so many years. Shin Zin said exasperated that he did not live up to expectations. Eldest Bo Fu must not be angry. It was Jing Guan Shen who smiled as he explained. It is not that Biao older brother does not have the volume for alcohol. But it is that he had drink Fu Twine and Yin Wang wine together. He pointed to the wine cups in front of Shen Kaiyu. Indeed the wine in the cup was not as red as Fu Twine and was not as silver as Yin Wang wine but was like a kind of mixed version. Jing Guan Sheng continued explaining, There are people here who are drinking Yin Wang wine and some who are drinking Fu Twine. Biao older brother most likely did not pay attention and poured it together. Others would have collapsed after drinking half a cup of Yin Wang wine and Fu Twine but Biao older brother is still awake. It is already not an easy feat. Ha ha ha. Adarin heard this and laughed. The heir's alcohol volume is already not bad. General Shen must not blame him. Shen Yuan swept a look at Shen Kaiyu and said, Eldest brother cannot continue to drink like this. It is better to go to a room and rest. Shen Kaiyu waved his head and mumbled something with his mouth. It seemed that he was quite drunk. Let me send Biao older brother back. Jing Guan Shen said with a smile. Even though because of the Shen Miao matter, Shen Xin was quite critical of Jing Guan Shen but one would not raise one's eyes to beat up a smiling person, and ever since more guards were placed at the courtyard doors, Jing Guan Sheng behaved better. Shen Xin looked at him, that being the case then one would trouble you and Akai to help him back. Just as Jing Guan Sheng was about to get up, one saw Shen Kaiyu grab on to Shen Yu on shooking his head. Okay, you bring me. Shen Yu on was startled as Shen Xin frowned. This kid has treated you as Akai. He then spoke to Shen Kaiyu, you brat, quickly release your second younger brother. Shen Kaiyu did not move. Shen Yuan's gaze slightly moved and said, Be a younger brother and me are the same, since it is as such, I will send eldest brother back to a room. He supported Shen Yuan and headed out without waiting for Shen Xin to refuse. Just as Shen Xin was about to speak, Shen Wan came over with wine. Eldest brother, I offer you a cup. After the little waves in the banquet, no one put it in mind as there were many people who entered and exit. But when the banquet ended, the Furans were talking leisurely about the courtyard. Bei Furan suddenly seemed to remember, why has Jing young lady not returned yet? After Jing Chu Chu's clothes were dirtied by the maid, 
she went back to change her clothes, but after that she did not make another appearance. Old Shifurin was surprised for a moment and asked Zai Er who was standing beside, go and find someone to ask why is Bi Ao young lady not back yet, perhaps one is a little drunk. Chen Yu smiled, just then she had drank a lot of honey wine and even though it is sweet, the alcohol content is rather high. Biao older sister loves sweet things and one forgot to hold her back. Most likely she was a little drunk and is resting in the room. Zai Er complied and went out. Feng and Ning pursed her lips and slightly pushed Shen Miao. Initially one though that since there are more daughters in your residence, it would be very lively during the family banquet so I insisted on following my mother. Now it seemed that it is very boring. Feng and Ning was the bright pearl in the Feng's residence bomb and did not have that many sisters, but Shen Miao had so many sisters but was not close to them. She was even deliberately neglected thus in Feng and Ning's eyes, it was very boring. So it is the case. Shen Miao answered. Feng and Ning looked around, I want to go to the toilet and will come over later. Wait for me. Feng and Ning followed the servant and walked away when Zai Er also returned back to old Shen Furen's side before shaking her head. Old Furen, the a young lady is not in the resting room. Not in the resting room? Old Shen Furen voice was rather high and the Furen's gaze is turned over to look. Old Shen Furen quickly tapered her voice down. Then where is she? Zai Er shook her head. The servants also do not know. This girl. Old Shen Furen was somewhat anxious. Could it be that something happened? When her appearance landed into the sharp eyes of the noble Furens, naturally it was cause for reckon. Old Furen? Just at the right time Chen Rikayu walked over and asked about what had happened before smiling. Old Furen need not be worried. I just came over from Master and think that Chu Chu is drunk. Speaking of which it is also coincidental that Kayu Er that child is also drunk, and was sent back to a room to rest. The alcohol in our family banquet is quite strong so perhaps Chu Chu is resting in another room. She had deliberately pointed out that Shen Kayu was also drunk and Shen Miao's eyes suddenly sharpened. Old Shen Furen shook her head and said, Go and get a few people to search for Chu Chu since it is just in the residence. It would not be good if one were to catch a cold. She looked towards other, speaking of which, this old one lately acquired from Zhang Qiao's Yan a piece of a golden Buddha drawing that has embroidery on both sides. It is currently hung in the main hall of this one's, if anyone want to see. This old one is willing to take all of you to take a look. Zhang Qiao's Yan was the Mingji master embroidered and one piece of embroidery could fetch a high value in the marketplace. Hearing that old Shen Furen had a piece, everyone wanted to take a look to widen their horizons. Shen Miao's lips hooked up. That double-sided embroidery was bestowed from the palace and was given to old Shen Furen by Shen Zin a few years ago, but this stingy person did not let others see. Now with this appearance, to be willing to bleed this much, there must be for another thing. Could it be really as old Shen Furen wished? Furens and young ladies were indeed very willing to follow old Shen Furen to look at that embroidered picture. The main hall of Rong Jing Tang was like a tea room for guests to relax at, but usually there were few people who would go there as old Shen Furen had few guests, thus the tea room was empty most of the time. However when one reached the doors, one saw that the doors were somewhat strange. Some noise sounded from the closed room and one could not hear what it was for the time being, as if something in the room was knocked over. Everyone abruptly stopped, who is inside? Where are the guards? Old Shen Furen questioned, replying Old Furen, just now they were still here. Most likely there are no one in the tea room. Zai Er said unconvincingly, really raise a group of idlers, cannot even guard a door properly. Old Shen Furen was somewhat angry, open up the doors, 